What's up guys? I got another awesome top from Kimball Hardwoods. This is one of the most unique tops I've seen in a long time. It has actual like waves of figure running through this. And if you got a piece of wood like that, you got to put down a blue ocean fade, right? So I've got all of my blues from Angelus here, light blue, blue, turquoise, navy blue, and neutral. And today we're going to do an awesome blue ocean fade. We're going to start with darker color on the bottom. We're going to move our way up. I put natural binding on this already. I used some bright tone clear gloss and I went through and I painted the edge and then I masked some of it off so I could go ahead and put down the color and have it not bleed in, hopefully. So we're gonna leave uh, the top light and go much darker on the bottom. The only problem in this piece of wood is right here, these two little uh, burl ends, nuggets, whatever you wanna call it. And then up here, I've got a little bit of grain sap, but we'll leave the top neutral like sand and come back and do dark. We're gonna start with turquoise and pull that down and then we're gonna wash neutral up top and hopefully we don't get too much blue on the top and it looks good. But we're gonna put the lightest coat down first. That way we can fix our messes as we go along. So again, you can purchase these Angelus dyes in the link below. They're selling three ounce bottles. You don't need uh, many more. Of course, I use the big bottles because I do this all the time. We've got turquoise. We're going to start with turquoise on the bottom third and bring it down. And then we'll leave this neutral. So I tape this off so I don't get too much color everywhere. But we'll begin by rubbing this in. This has been sanded down to 320. And you can already see as I apply the color, this looks outstanding. This piece of wood is, is amazing. We'll get the color to even out up here. The trick with the natural binding is to put it down, let it dry, and then tape it off so you don't get the color everywhere. We're gonna go with some light blue down on the bottom on this, I guess, quarter or fifth. We'll darken it up. The light blue is usually kind of dark. Pull that color down. So the blue makes those burl disappear. The big problem is with the end grain. That's where you always get color to seep. Hoping to avoid that today. We'll blend the blue and the turquoise like so. And then we're gonna come back with the regular blue. I'm not gonna use the navy, it's too dark. We're gonna wipe the blue on the bottom. Like so. The dark blue can kinda of get purple sometimes. See it a little bit purple. I'll show you a scraping binding trick that cleans up the natural binding. I'm gonna come back with some light blue and fade this a little bit better. You can definitely see the blue turning purple. So we're just washing the colors. Come back with the turquoise and wash that. 
I'm almost out of turquoise. I had one issue as I was drilling in. It pulled a little bit of the wood up. Hopefully the color will mask it under the bridge. Just moving around a little bit. It's a pretty good fade. Colors even. So then we're going to take the neutral and work the neutral on the upside here, on the upper horns. I should change my gloves. All right, back with the neutral. Clean glove, clean rag. You'll see the guys from PRS change their gloves a lot. For some reason I have some black on here. There we go. And all we're gonna do is wash out the turquoise and just slowly bring it up, like so. I'm gonna take it a little bit higher. This is the other rag that had all the blue. We'll just feather this up a little bit more. Wash this down. You can see the neutral helps pick up that purple that's in the blue, it washes it out. And we can just bring it up ever so slightly. I think I still want to take the blue just a little bit higher. So we're going to just wash it like this. It just has the ever so slight blue. The only issue is right there. Come back with a little bit more turquoise and we'll wash it up like that. Ah, much better. Come back with the neutral and fade that back up. And I've got just ever so slight blue being carried up. That looks really good. See, these horns need a little bit of blue. Reason I stick out my pinky so it doesn't drag across. All right, we'll let that dry for 24 hours, see what it comes back like. The top is a little bit hazy. I think I could still sand a little bit out. We'll probably hand sand a couple spots here. I've got a nice hard line that's from the sealer. leave it. So we let this dry for 24 hours, actually about 12 hours. Gotta let it dry so the dye soaks in. The blue and the purple disappeared, which is pretty good. There's maybe two or three spots here. For some reason, I don't like the color sitting on the top. It's a little splotchy in a couple spots. I'm not 100% sure why, so I'm going to come back with some 600 grit here and just clean it up. I don't know if the top, I sanded down to 320 and I don't know if the top just isn't liking stain or it's just the same sitting on it. So we're gonna come through here and just sand, I'll fast forward this, um, but I'm gonna go in that sort of teardrop-ish shape to some degree and just see if I can get this cleaned up. Actually, that little bit of sanding makes a huge difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the bottom vacuum and then sand the top. 
we're going to use some 320 grit sandpaper here and we're just going to pull off that top layer of color you can see as I work that around I pull it up make sure you don't sand going up with that dark color or you're essentially just going to rub in the dark color so I've got the vacuum cleaner and we're cleaning off the sandpaper as we move up what's really nice is once you apply that top color down up top you can just sand some of it off and it really does a nice job of keeping it clean problem is the dark blue on the bottom all right so we sanded out a decent amount of color and it looks a ton better that notch really makes me angry but the blue is way more blue and even though I sanded it and vacuumed it there's still a lot of color left on the top so before we add any more neutral back we're just going to make sure that the top is clean if I really want the colors to blend gotta make sure I'm clean you can see as I sanded up a little bit it brought some of the dye in you know, you're sort of rubbing that in alright for the last stage here we're just gonna wash the colors a little bit better with neutral and leave it I think I probably could add a little bit of turquoise and just bring the colors down and use that as a wash I might actually do that first that'll help fade the blue here you can see I sanded more out here it's not exactly even but we'll start on the bottom and just sort of work it up a little bit it's picking up a lot of blue and I'm running out of turquoise But I do love the look of the waves. Really unique. You can see as I was sanding, the color builds a little bit on the edge. But when I do the steel wool trick, I should be able to massage that off. We'll come back with a clean rag in neutral and just sort of wipe this around. Got a clean spot of the rag. We'll just stay right underneath the pick up. And I think I got a really good fade. Blend this a little bit more. really pulls all the colors together we'll come down and just massage this once more see the blue getting picked up that's it I think we are good we'll let this dry for another couple hours We'll actually peel the tape off, try and get those edges. I don't really see any issues on the edge now, now that I blended it, maybe right there, but that's not a big deal. Really nice fade. I know when I hit this with some sanding sealer, it'll look great. Maybe it's a little bit too dark right there. Let's see if we can just rub that out. That was it. A little bit of purple on the bottom side here, which I'm okay with. The steel will clean it up, so let it sit. So here is the world famous steel wool trick. Please do not use those 
Brillo pads or those uh, felt pads, they're terrible. Get fine grade steel wool and you'll just end up pulling the top layer of color off. That's the color that's not sitting in the wood but sitting on the top. Here I'm going to vacuum it as I'm moving the color around. Make sure I don't take the darker color from the bottom to the lighter color on the top. So then we're going to peel the tape off from the natural binding. Trying to use some Instagram <laughs> captures here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and actually uh, use a razor blade and just clean off any of the color that's seeped in. Get a really nice hard line. Razor blade helps tremendously. So then after we get it all clean, we put on some sanding sealer. We did four coats of sanding sealer. Those first two coats are real light. And then the last sets of coats are heavier. After that dried, I went and put on Mohawk pre catalyzed satin lacquer. And like I said in the video, I put on about uh, 10 coats. It wasn't sitting right, so we sanded in between each coat. Pulled up a little bit of color, but I ended up getting a really nice smooth finish. So once we had it smooth, we added one more coat here. And it's all set. We'll go back live in video. So this thing turned out outstanding. I am really happy with the way it looked. For some reason, the wood, after I stained it and after I started putting the finish, I was getting a little bit of movement in the top for some reason. I don't know if it's the grain of the wood or whatever, but every time I would put a coat of the satin mohawk finish down, it just wasn't sitting right. So I actually ended up doing about 10 coats of this mohawk uh, pre-catalyzed satin finish. And I sanded it down after each time and now it looks outstanding. Just a little bit of bleeding right there. But other than that, it is beautiful. I don't really know how that bled through right there. I wonder if I scraped it, if it would come out. So this is one of those multi-layer bodies that I've done. It's the quilted maple cap, blue uh, stained maple uh, veneer, and then a piece of ash. And then I've got this basswood back. And honestly, I, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I was gonna leave it, I'm kinda lost. I was gonna do this sort of baby blue finish on the back and then try and do a design or something. I don't know. I've actually had a couple of offers to sell it already. Um, maybe I should just sell it and you guys could do what you want. It's nicely sealed. It's got this mohawk finish on it. So the top is done. All I have to do is tape it off and then do something with the back, which I'm not sure what that would mean at this point. It's got all the holes drilled and everything. Really beautiful, outstanding looking body. Happy with the way this turned out. One of the best looking tops I've worked with in a long time. Uh, the only issue are these two little divots that even though I sealed them a bunch of times, they still just don't want to go, but I'm just going to leave it. Like, it's one of those tops where you just spend too much time on it, you're going to cause some problems. This little notch actually doesn't show when I put the bridge on, so I, I don't think there's any issues with it. So, beautiful guitar body. I'll sell this for 250 so if someone wants to make me that offer, I'll put it on. If not, maybe I'll put something on the back and then sell it for 300. I don't know. Anyway, really awesome project. Love the way that this one turned out. Outstanding wood from Kimball Hardwood. Blue Ocean Fade. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.